Welcome to the Intramural Sports Captain's Meeting for Inner Tube Water Polo. Following the PowerPoint, you will be required to complete a quiz in order for your team to complete the pre-registration process. As a captain, it is your job to relay all information in this PowerPoint to your teammates. It is also your job to make sure that all the participants are responsible for the rules and the intramural sports policies posted on IM Leagues on the left-hand side toolbar. Ignorance of the rules is not an excuse for their violation. The Office of Competitive Sports is located in room 1025 of the Natatorium. Our office phone number is 608-262-8258. The intramural, intramural sports email is the best way to contact us at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu. The weather hotline number is 608-262-4756. Option number four will get you the cancellation information. All efforts will be made to announce cancellations by 3 p.m on weekdays. Regular season games are only rescheduled in extreme circumstances. Playoff games that are canceled due to inclement weather will be rescheduled and most likely pushed to the following day, subsequently pushing all other games in the bracket back a day. Please check IM Leagues for schedule revisions. Cancellations if your team is wishing to cancel a game, you or another co-captain must email the Intramural Sports Administrative Staff at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu by 12 p.m. the day of the contest with your name, your team name, the league of play, and the intent to cancel. Once a cancellation has been gra granted, the request cannot be overturned. Cancellations must be made by 12 p.m. the day of the contest, otherwise it will result in your team being charged a $25 default fee. Phone cancellations will no longer be accepted. What is a default? A default is when a team has less than the minimum number of required players, and that differs by sport, of a team, have checked in with the supervisor at the scheduled location, within 10 minutes of the scheduled time of the contest. The supervisor will then declare the contest a default. A default carries a $25 fee which can be paid online using your IM Leagues account. In order to participate in intramurals, you must have a valid recreational sports membership. So all fee paying students are eligible to participate in intramural sports. Faculty and staff members must have a valid recreational sports membership and they are eligible to participate as well. All participants must activate their account on IM Leagues prior to play. That is important when adding people to your roster that they activate their IM Leagues account. Participants may only compete on one single gender team and one co-rec team. Participants are not allowed to play on two single gendered teams or two correct teams. One of your jobs as captains is to be responsible and ensure the accuracy of your team's roster before the playoffs begin. Rosters may be viewed at any time on IM leagues. Players that are added to the roster can be added at any time on IM leagues or at the game site provided they are eligible to play for that team and meet all other requirements. So as long as the team hasn't played on another team in that same division, they are able to go ahead and be added at that time. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the regular season will forfeit that game. Any team that uses an ineligible player during the playoffs will forfeit that game and will be immediately dropped from further competition. 
All participants must have a valid UWID card or recreational sports membership card that swipes into Fusion. If you or a participant forgets their UWID card, they can still gain access by using a courtesy pass as long as they have another valid photo ID or have a picture in Fusion. If their picture is in Fusion, they have a driver's license, a passport, or any other government issue photo ID, they will go ahead and get a courtesy pass. Courtesy passes may be issued up to six times per semester for participants. This includes entries into facilities and numbers are reset at the beginning of every semester. So if you were checking into the natatorium to play basketball for intramural sports, that would count as two courtesy passes, one to get into the natatorium and one more to participate in the program. The following slide is a breakdown of our sportsmanship rating. Remember that sportsmanship ratings are affected by a team's participants and spectators conduct before, during, and after a contest. All teams that achieve a 4.0 average or higher in sportsmanship rating and maintain that 4.0 average will make the playoffs as long as they have less than two forfeits, cancellations, defaults, or any combina combination of the aforementioned and achieve a regular season of rec record of 500 or better. So you have to hit all three bullet points. Any team not given the opportunity to play 50% or more of their regularly scheduled games, games canceled due to rain, not including defaults and cancellations, will be placed into the playoffs. The day following the end of the regular season, a blank bracket will be posted on the IM League's website. Teams will be ranked by their winning percentage, with the tiebreaker being accumulated sportsmanship points. Further ties will be broken randomly by the system. Starting at 5 p.m., teams will then have the option to go ahead and select their position on the bracket based on their rank. Each team will be given a specific time when they are allowed to select their spot. It is important to focus on your team's best available days and times to play throughout the playoffs more than the competition level. Please pick days that you can play. If a qualifying team misses their designated slot time, they can jump into the order where it stands and select at that time. Qualifying teams that fail to select their spot in the draft prior to its conclusion will be randomly assigned to an open spot by the league coordinator. Reschedules Regularly, Regular season games will not be rescheduled. Playoff games will only be rescheduled due to conflict with other intramural sports activities and academic conflicts such as classes, labs, and exams that result in a team not having the minimum number required to start the game. Teams wishing to request a game be rescheduled must submit a rescheduled request form located on the Rec Sports website under the intramural sports tab by 12 p.m. the business day prior to the game. Proof of conflicts must be uploaded into the form located on the website. If a team feels an intramural sports staff member has enforced a rule or policy incorrectly, they must call a timeout immediately following the ruling in question. The intramural sports supervisor will then make a decision regarding the correct ruling and how to proceed. If that supervisor is unable to make a decision there on the spot. The game will be played under protest and the intramural sports administrative staff will make a decision the following business day. Only rule interpretations and player eligibility can be protested. No, the judgment of an official may never be protested. The competitive sports staff reserves the right to eject any individual, team, or spectator who interrupts the flow of a game in any manner. Players may be ejected before, during, and after any contest and by any rec sports staff member.
To regain eligibility, the ejected person must complete each of the following listed below. They must prepare a written statement detailing the events surrounding the incident. In included is an outline of the events surrounding the ejection, actions that led to the ejection, assurance that behavior like that will not occur again, suggestion for appropriate disciplinary action, and how the behavior will be avoided in the future. The statement should be then sent to the coordinator of competitive sports. You should also schedule an appointment to meet with a coordinator of competitive sports. Our contact information can be found on the Rec Sports website. Please check out the Intramural Sports Handbook for further information regarding ejections and reinstatement. What's new? There are a lot of rule changes throughout specific sports. Please make sure you read through all of the rules carefully and relay them to your team before play. In Co-Rec now, the differential between male and female participants can be no more than two. In previous years, that difference could be only one. By relaxing the requirement, teams should be able to go ahead and participate in more games in games that they normally would have defaulted in the past. An example being in a six on six indoor volleyball game, you needed three males and three females to go ahead and participate. Well, if you only had one female to play, this year you would be able to play. You would have to play four on six and there would be three males on the court and one female. For a complete listing of all co-rep differences, please make sure you check out the individual rules posted on IM Leagues. Starting this fall, the Intramural Sports Program will be recognizing one outstanding participant both fall and spring semester with the Dr. Walter A. Wittich Family Fund. The scholarship, which is $400 and can be used to cover whatever school expenses a student wishes, will be awarded to the Intramural Sports participant that shows a high degree of merit in the Intramural Sports Program, specifically in the areas of participation, leadership, sportsmanship, and a growing appreciation of the lifelong value of physical activity. Any student who has participated in an intramural sport during the semester of the award is eligible to apply. Students should submit an application highlighting participation in intramural sports while at UW-Madison, the leadership shown both in sport and on campus, examples of sportsmanship, and how involvement in the intramural sports program has influenced lifelong healthy physical activity habits. Dr. Wittich established this scholarship in 1998 in memory of his grandfather, George Wittich, and his father, Walter J. Wittich, whom both gave lifelong professional support to the development and organization of recreation and rural sports programs in Wisconsin and elsewhere. Participants should complete an application online detailing how they meet the requirements for the fund and submit before December 1st. Applications will be reviewed and the recipient will be contacted by December 12th. A game shall consist of two 12-minute halves with a running clock. Play begins with all players touching their end, of the end wall of the pool and players must leave the wall once the official throws the ball into the center of the pool. Each team is granted one timeout per game the timeout is a minute in length. A timeout may not be taken within the last minute of play. Games will begin at their scheduled time. Teams will be given a 10 minute grace period to have the required minimum of players before the first game is declared a default. Teams shall consist of 7 players and a minimum of 5 players are required at all times. When playing with less than 7 players, the male to female or female to male ratio, uh, ratio cannot be more than a difference of two. All players must sit on top of the tube or lay flat across it. However, goalies must sit in the tube. No player may leave his or her inner tube to play a ball. Players may hold the ball with one hand and may not hold the ball under the water. Players are not allowed to enter the goal areas two yards in front of the net. Defensive players may not throw the ball back to their goalie. Goalies may not throw the ball more than one half the length of the pool and not hold the ball for more than five seconds. 
Any form of tackling is illegal. There is a personal foul and a penalty shot for the opposing team. Splashing is a legal action. However, you cannot splash the player that is serving as the goalie or anyone that does not have the ball. After minor infractions, the team is awarded a free throw from the nearest spot of the infraction. The thrower shall not be guarded, but the ball must touch at least one person before it can be scored. A penalty shot is awarded to the offensive team if they are fouled inside the penalty area. The player who is fouled must take the penalty throw. Penalty shots taken from outside the penalty area and the shooter may not be guarded. During the penalty throw, only the goalie may be in the goal area. A goal is scored by a male is worth one point. Any goal scored by a female is worth two points. Penalty shots are worth one point regardless of who scores. If a shooter falls out of his or her tube when attempting to score, the goal will be disallowed. Games ending in, a tie, ending in a tie, a sudden death overtime will determine the winner. All pool rules must be followed unless specified. Any ball leaving the pool is out of bounds. It's a free toss for the opposing team. Over and back. After the ball passes the mid-pool line, the offensive team may not go back behind it. Penalty. That is a free throw for the opposing team. No players, except for goalies, may use the edge of the pool as leverage in attempting to make a play on the ball or take a better position. And there is no diving in the pool. Players are required to wear a swimsuit. One piece recommended for women. Shirts of your team color are not required. The caps and tubes will serve to separate the teams. Illegal equipment includes the following. Hats or visors, any type of padding containing sole leather, fiber or metal, even if they are covered with padding, casts of any material, flippers, jewelry, and sunglasses. This concludes the Intermural Sports Intertube Water Polo Captains Meeting. The Captains Quiz following on IM Leagues must be completed with a score of 80% or higher before a team can be created. Feel free to contact us at imsports at recsports.wisc.edu with your questions or feedback. Best of luck this season.